The change in gastrointestinal structure after bariatric surgery affects micronutrient intake and absorption, increasing the risk of micronutrient deficiencies. In this video, I'm going to highlight some of the most affected micronutrients and outline recommendations for pre and post surgical monitoring and prophylactic supplementation. Bariatric surgery can result in micronutrient deficiencies for several reasons. One is that it significantly reduces the amount of food consumed, limiting the opportunity for micronutrient intake. Patients often spend the first two weeks after surgery on a liquid diet with limited variety and an overall energy intake of less than 1,000 calories per day. Then they'll spend at least another week on a puree diet with a similar capacity for energy intake before beginning to reintroduce soft and regular solids. At that point, a slight increase in energy intake is observed, but patients typically remain in an energy deficit for multiple months, with micronutrient intake lagging as well. During this process, some patients develop complications like vomiting or diarrhea that can further decrease micronutrient intake and exacerbate micronutrient losses. They may also find new aversions or intolerances that prevent them from consuming some of the best sources of specific micronutrients. For instance, patients often experience a change in the way they smell and taste beef and seafood, causing them to avoid foods that are the richest in iron and vitamin B12. Put simply, without careful attention to food choices and micronutrient supplementation, Micronutrient deficiencies can arise in the first few weeks or months after surgery. That's especially true for most water-soluble nutrients, since the body cannot store most of them to any significant degree. The final reason bariatric surgery can lead to micronutrient deficiencies is through malabsorption, which I described in my video on how bariatric surgery works as a feature of several procedures not a complication like persistent vomiting or diarrhea. These procedures, like the Ruin Y gastric bypass and the duodenal switch, are designed to decrease the energy absorbed by bypassing the parts of the small intestine where most macronutrient digestion and absorption occurs. While this is the primary goal of their unique arrangement, they also impact micronutrient digestion and absorption by reducing the capacity of the stomach to produce hydrochloric acid, bypassing the specific section or sections of the small intestine where absorption of a micronutrient occurs, or not allowing for the adequate mixing of chyme with bile salts and digestive enzymes. Even though these changes can potentially impact all micronutrients, the four that receive the most attention are vitamin B12, iron, calcium, and vitamin D. First, we'll look at vitamin B12. Patients who undergo bariatric surgery can be at risk of vitamin B12 deficiency through a decreased ability to release vitamin B12 from the food it's packaged in and reduced intrinsic factor production. Both of these issues stem from the loss of parietal cells found in the gastric fundus and body. These cells secrete hydrochloric acid, freeing vitamin B12 from the food matrix so it can bind to salivary R proteins in the stomach. The parietal cells also produce intrinsic factor, which must bind to vitamin B12 in the small intestine for absorption to happen. Without adequate hydrochloric acid and intrinsic factor, much of the vitamin B12 ingested will go unabsorbed. Next up, we have iron. Patients undergoing bariatric surgery can be at risk of iron deficiency through a decreased ability to convert iron from the ferric to the ferrous form and bypassing the duodenum and proximal jejunum, where iron absorption occurs. Much of the iron we consume is in the ferric form, which is the plus three oxidation state of the mineral. However, to be absorbed, it must be in the ferrous form or bound to a protein-like heme. An enzyme in the small intestine converts iron from ferric to ferrous, but that process depends on the acidity of the gastric juices that arrive with it. Otherwise, the more basic environment of the small intestine will cause the ferric iron to precipitate and become unabsorbable. 
as we saw with vitamin B12, losing gastric parietal cells limits hydrochloric acid production and has a downstream effect on the entire process. The last two micronutrients on our list are calcium and vitamin D. Like vitamin B12 and iron, the decrease in hydrochloric acid production after bariatric surgery diminishes calcium absorption. Calcium in food and beverages is mostly part of a salt or complex that must become soluble and converted to the ionized form calcium 2 plus to be absorbed. Without a sufficiently acidic environment, calcium passes through without this taking place. Even if the availability of calcium in a soluble and ionized form is adequate, having good vitamin D status is necessary to bring the calcium through the intestinal wall and into circulation. Vitamin D deficiency, marked by low serum levels of 25-hydroxyvitamin D, has a higher prevalence in those living with obesity than it does with the rest of the general population. So, Candidates for bariatric surgery are at risk of vitamin D deficiency even before the surgery happens. After surgery, especially with bypass surgeries, patients are at risk of malabsorption of dietary vitamin D due to inadequate mixing of chyme with bile salts, which can affect any fat-soluble nutrient. The consequences of deficiency for all the micronutrients we've covered so far are pretty straightforward. With vitamin B12 deficiency, patients can develop macrocytic anemia and peripheral neuropathy. With iron deficiency, patients can develop microcytic anemia. And with calcium and vitamin D deficiency, patients are at risk of metabolic bone disease. As mentioned previously, these aren't the only micronutrients that are affected by bariatric surgery, but they're the ones that tend to receive the most attention. Others that receive a higher level of attention include the remainder of the fat-soluble vitamins, A, E, and K, because of the delayed mixing of dietary fat with bile salts and digestive enzymes. Thiamine and zinc also receive attention because deficiency can develop rapidly with low intake, vomiting, and diarrhea. If you're enjoying this video so far, make sure you hit the like button, share it with a friend, and shop for more free and exclusive content by clicking the link down in the video description. Now that we've seen some of the micronutrients most affected by bariatric surgery, I'll turn to solutions by outlining recommendations for preoperative laboratory monitoring, postoperative laboratory monitoring, and prophylactic supplementation. According to the most recent clinical practice guidelines to address this topic, a 2019 update from the American Association of Clinical Endocrinologists and the American College of Endocrinology, the Obesity Society, the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery, the Obesity Medicine Association, and the American Society of Anesthesiologists, all patients must undergo an appropriate nutritional evaluation, including micronutrient measurements, before any bariatric procedure. They list iron studies, vitamin B12, folic acid, and vitamin D as measurements that must be obtained, and vitamins A and E as measurements that are optional. They also encourage us to consider more extensive testing in patients undergoing malabsorptive procedures based on symptoms and risks. Therefore, if a deficiency is suspected, Micronutrients like zinc and thiamine can be tested case by case. Any deficiency discovered through preoperative laboratory testing should be treated using the repletion dose for the individual micronutrients. The standard laboratory measurements that are obtained and the repletion strategy can vary from clinic to clinic, so it's always important to know the in-house protocol. If there's no established protocol, consider developing one to create consistency in patient care. The 2019 update to the clinical practice guidelines can be a starting point for decision making, as can other publications like the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery's 2016 Guidelines for Micronutrients. Once the bariatric surgery has been performed, 
all patients are recommended to begin prophylactic micronutrient supplementation to prevent deficiency. Here, the recommendations can change based on the type of procedure that's performed and individual risk assessment based on age and sex. However, they generally include a multivitamin slash multimineral, calcium, vitamin D, and vitamin B12. Though again, there are differences from clinic to clinic. For instance, some bariatric surgery clinics recommend a separate iron supplement for all patients, whereas others ask patients to take a multivitamin slash multimineral with iron in it. Similarly, some bariatric surgery clinics recommend a separate vitamin A supplement, whereas others shy away from megadoses due to the concern for toxicity with chronic use. That said, it's commonly recommended that they get 100-200% to of the RDA for each of the micronutrients in the multivitamin and multimineral, and that the dosage of vitamin B12 and vitamin D is 500 micrograms of cyanocobalamin and 3,000 units of cholecalciferol, respectively. Calcium supplementation is often stratified by the type of procedure, with the sleeve gastrectomy and ruin Y requiring 1,200 to 1,500 milligrams per day, and the duodenal switch requiring 1,800 to 2,400 milligrams per day. So, a patient who undergoes a sleeve gastrectomy may be asked to take a multivitamin slash multimineral with iron, 500 micrograms of vitamin B12, 1500 milligrams of calcium, and 3000 units of vitamin D. The vitamin D can then be titrated to ensure blood levels reach greater than 30 nanograms per milliliter. Despite differences in clinic policy, there are two aspects that seem consistent. Recommendations to use a chewable or liquid multivitamin slash multimineral instead of a gummy one, at least initially, and to use calcium citrate instead of calcium carbonate. A chewable or liquid multivitamin is more desirable than the gummy version because it's easier for the gastrointestinal tract to break down and absorb the nutrients. Calcium citrate is preferred over calcium carbonate because it doesn't require an acidic environment for absorption, which is ideal considering the change to hydrochloric acid secretion after bariatric surgery. Calcium citrate can also be taken with or without meals, while patients must take calcium carbonate at mealtime. The primary issues with calcium citrate are the large tablet size and the need to take in divided doses, sometimes leading to low adherence. Thankfully, as bariatric surgery has become more prevalent, more companies and products have emerged that specifically address the needs of this unique patient population. These products can be advantageous because they typically provide much higher doses of most micronutrients, limiting the total number of supplements the patient needs to take each day. The final step in preventing micronutrient deficiencies after bariatric surgery is for all patients to undergo routine postoperative laboratory testing. This, of course, is another issue addressed by the 2019 update to the clinical practice guidelines I discussed before. For vitamin B12, they recommend testing every three months for the first year after surgery, and then at least annually after that. For iron, they recommend testing within three months after surgery, every three to six months for the first year, and then annually. For calcium and vitamin D, they recommend routine monitoring for all patients. They never really clarify what that means, but I think it's fair to take a vitamin D measurement whenever vitamin B12 or iron studies are being obtained. Calcium is of lesser importance since the serum level is generally a poor indicator of calcium intake and body stores. Some other micronutrients discussed in the guidelines include thiamine, folate, vitamin A, zinc, and copper. Testing for thiamine deficiency should be completed for high-risk groups, such as those with intractable vomiting or excessive alcohol use. Folate is similar to calcium. They recommend screening but don't provide a frequency. For vitamin A, they recommend testing within the first postoperative year. 
And for zinc and copper, they recommend annual testing only for patients who undergo the ruin wide gastric bypass or the duodenal switch, given the higher degree of malabsorption that occurs with those procedures. In summary, Bariatric surgery increases the risk of micronutrient deficiencies by restricting the total amount consumed and reducing the amount absorbed. The micronutrients that receive the most attention are vitamin B12, iron, calcium, and vitamin D. Even though the risk of deficiency increases for a wide range of vitamins and minerals like thiamine, folate, vitamin A, zinc, and copper. All patients should undergo preoperative and postoperative laboratory testing and prophylactic micronutrient supplementation to minimize the risk of deficiency. The laboratory test obtained and the micronutrient supplements recommended vary slightly from clinic to clinic, but should be based on clinical practice guidelines published by organizations like the American Society for Metabolic and Bariatric Surgery. In the following video, all cover recommendations for diet progression. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel.